All right, um, so today's project is the beginning of a couple of projects I plan on doing, which revolve around probing electric and magnetic fields and measuring them, uh, the near fields in space, like around capacitors, inductors, around circuits, around antennas. Um, so I'm going to be doing those today with this version of this project. Um, this particular version, I have a signal source that's uh, going to be like an electric field or well, really it's going to be a frequency generator plugged into a, a coil or a capacitor. Then on this side there's a probe, and that probe goes into a, this up converter um, made by SV1 AFN, and that converter brings it up to a frequency that will go into the SDR Sharp program um, uh, using an RTL dongle, and the frequency generator is going to be up converted by 200 megahertz for that. That goes into, on the same computer, uh, Spectrum Lab is running, and that is going to give us the ability to look at an audio frequency, um, sort of better resolution, um, more familiar with Spectrum Lab, and it does a good job of um, audio frequency spectrum anal analysis. Okay, so this is again, we're going to be, so we're, if we're going to test a 2 megahertz signal coming from an inductor or something, we would tune the SDR to 202 megahertz, the frequency converter, uh, the frequency generator is set to like a little above 2, 2 megahertz, and then Spectrum Lab would then view that difference as 4 kilohertz. Okay? And so we'll go ahead and put down. Let's see, here's our capacitance probe. It's a PCB where I've just taken off some of the copper. And the inductor probe looks like this. It's a similar uh, a set of each. So what we'll do first is capacitance. And what I will do is put a one millivolt signal directly into one of the probes, capacitance probes, and then measure uh, E field probe, and then measure what comes out with this probe. Okay, so I'm going to put the signal in. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to approach the probe. You can hear it getting stronger on the spectrum anal analyzer. Um, and that's giving us an audio frequency that's the difference between what the SDR is set to tune at and what the generator is set to tune at. Plus they have their own frequency references. So there's gonna always gonna be a difference there anyway. Okay, so say then if you touch them together, the signal's higher. Um, so what I'm gonna do is set these close to each other. Okay. There we are. We should see a signal on the spectrum analyzer, which we're going to look at now. This is SDR Sharp. Uh, just real quick, you want to set your frequency correction so you can get a closer measurement versus what your generator is putting out. Uh, it looks like we have a signal here at about 32 kilohertz. Okay. 3200 hertz. Uh, if we move our probe, that should go away. Yeah, so it's right there. And if we bring it back, it's back. So if I was to tune my generator up by 2 kilohertz, the frequency is now up 2 kilohertz. And the other thing I can do is turn on internal modulation on my generator. It sort of helps me locate the signal on the spectrum analyzer because it puts two sidebands and I can toggle between 400 hertz and 1 kilohertz. So you can see there are always these other spurious signals that you don't even care about but having those sidebands helps you kind of locate the one you're looking for. But you don't have to have that. If you don't have any internal modulation it's just going to show the one frequency. So that's with capacitance. 
I'm going to plug in, I'm going to leave the screen up where it is. And that, that was with one millivolt signal onto those. I'm going to use that same one millivolt signal out of the generator. Um, and plug in uh, two coils. So it's going to be these two coils. When I bring them near each other, we get a signal output. If I turn them 90 degrees to each other, that signal is should be less. Oh, like that, yeah. Couple them tightly. Signal is the strongest. So that's measuring an electric field, or sorry, a magnetic field. If we can actually mix the probes up. So if I have a magnetic field here, and I'm going to measure the electric field around this probe. I do get some signal. It's less, but it's there. I uh, could use a different probe, which is just a coax cable. And well, there's a probe around here somewhere that's just a coax cable with just the tip. Yeah, it's this guy. This is just the just the tip is sticking out there. Um, so whatever field is present right at that tip, that just gives you a higher resolution. I've read about that online. Okay. <clears throat> um, the other thing that I wanted to show, I have an Arduino. A couple of things actually. I'll show an antenna and then the Arduino in the opposite order. So here's an Arduino. It's going to have an oscillator of um, 2 of 15 megahertz, or 16 megahertz, I'm sorry. Um, this, it turns out that there is a 16 megahertz signal already. Um, and it's actually, with this Arduino, it's dead on the same as whatever is generated by the computer. There's some 16 megahertz signal floating around. But with this other Arduino, the crystal's slightly off, and I can measure and see a slight difference. I think. So, I'm going to plug in the right probe, and we'll go look at the magnetic field here. Oh yeah, there's a good magnetic field over that crystal. Pretty much right on that crystal. Um, if we do a make capac or a uh, electric field probe. We can look at that. About the same area, you know. And then if we used our higher resolution probe. We can show that that works anyway. All right, so here's my coax end. I think there was an electric field over by this chip too. So anyway, that's the capacitor, or that's the electric field. And then finally, I'm going to do the antenna. Okay, so here's the antenna. Okay, so that's the electric field. It's very low at the bottom, but very high at the top, which is normal for quarter wave antenna. The magnetic field, um, and this stays pretty uniform. It's high up here, 
going all the way down and pretty much starts at the loading coil. Alright, that's the project. Um, next step, I think what I'm going to do is using an NE602 mixer go direct to audio instead of using this up converter. The thing I liked about the up converter was it had a good preamp for the low noise amplifier, but I've, it is not working any longer. So um, that would have let me just go straight from the mixer into a sound card. I bought the sound card online and that adapter will go straight into Spectrum Lab, bypass it, SDR sharp altogether. But it's a good project. The uh, frequency range, I don't think the the Spectrum Lab, or not the Spectrum Lab, but the converter does very well below like 50 kilohertz. The sensitivity is not as good. It still works, but it's just not as good. The converter actually works down to DC, but the sensitivity is not as good below about 50 kilohertz. Or maybe 20. Don't take my word for that. Alright, that's the project.